All right, you know, from time to time over the course of my life, there have been conversations that uh, just stick out in my mind. <laughs> I mean, you go through life and you have conversations every day. You have conversations, you know, via text. You have conversations via the phone, in person, et cetera, et cetera. And the overwhelming majority of those day-to-day -day, uh, conversations, they, they just go in and in, in and out without even thinking. But then every now and then, there's a conversation that comes along that just sticks in your mind. And one of the conversations such, uh, such as, as that, that, that has stuck in my mind over the years, was a conversation I had with a guy named Mark Hansen. That was his name, Mark Hansen. I don't recall whether it was H-A-N-S-O-N or H-A-N-S-E-N. It really doesn't matter. But uh, I had um, I had just gotten out of the military, and I mean just gotten out of the military. And I drove from Monterey, Fort Ord, California, up to Santa Rosa, California, in a little silver Chevy Chevette. And I went up there, I, I had got out of the military and I basically had two options. One was to go back to Cleveland. One was to go back and live in Cleveland, um, which I had spent 18 years just chomping at the bit to get out of. Uh, and the other one was to go up and, and live in uh, a, a Northern, California, Northern California town called Santa Rosa. I had an uncle up there that I had never... Uh, known that that existed uh, right up until the time I, I joined the military at 18. When I was shortly after joining the military in 18, I found out that I had an uncle in a little town called Santa Rosa, and his name was Steve. Well, Steve was uh, kind of isolated from the family, very similar to how I find myself now being at about 56, 56 years old. I was, uh, Steve was isolated from the family for the most part. He had limited communication with the family, but for all intent and purpose, he was, uh, he was, uh, flying solo, so to speak, out there in California. So I think when Steve saw the opportunity to have family, uh, come and, and live in the same town and be a part of his life, uh, I think that he embraced it much as I would embrace it probably if uh, if a similar situation arose. But uh, but anyway, so I got out of the military and Steve Steve had told me he promised me he said if you come to Santa Rosa, I promise you I'll, you'll always have a place to live and and you'll you'll never go hungry and you know all that kind of stuff. So uh, the first day the first day I went up to Santa Rosa, I. I stopped at his office. I stopped at Steve's real estate office, and Steve used to always have an old Cadillac. He used to love the old Cadillacs, usually the convertible kind. More times than not, he had an old convertible Cadillac. And I pulled up at his office, and Steve was going to take me to the apartment that he had set up for me. But before that, we had to go show this guy some real estate. We had to go show this guy some real estate. So I, Steve wanted me to come along and I jumped in the back seat and we ran, we, we drove down the, the road to a place called JJ North's Buffet. JJ North's Buffet. And we pulled in and this younger guy, probably in his early forties, he, uh, he got into the front seat of the Cadillac and Steve was going to go show him some property. Well, long story short, we hadn't even been uh, driving down the road less than uh, less than probably five or ten minutes when Steve started to tell Mark uh, that his nephew in the back seat, me, uh, had just gotten out of the military just that, that that day. So Mark turned around to me and he looked at me and he said, "So you just got out of the military?" You know, I was all of twenty one years old, and he I said, "Yeah." I said, "I just did." He said, "What are you going to do with yourself?" And I said, "I don't know." I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. I just got out this morning. And he said, how'd you like to be my head cook? I said, your head cook? What are you talking about, your head cook? At that place there, J.J. North's Buffet? He said, yeah, why don't you, he said, you want to be my head cook? You could start tomorrow. <laughs> and I said, I don't know how to cook. And he said, can you read? I said, well, of course I can read. He said, well, then you can cook. 
show up tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. And, you know, I started thinking, and, and thus I got that job. And I'll never forget that conversation. You know, can you read? You know, was this question. And, uh, you know, I, I, I found myself thinking about that here on a, uh, here on a um, Sunday evening as I'm getting ready to uh, pull some stuff out of the, uh, the crock pot that, I, that I've been making. And as I was uh, thinking about that story, I also found myself thinking about, you know, how, how much I like to cook. You know, I really, really, I like to cook. And, you know, I attribute that to uh, years ago being a mama's boy. I was always a mama's boy for the better part of my, my, my youth, right up until about adolescence. And then I entered the rebellious phase. But up until about 12 or 13 years old, you know, you'd always find me by, by, by my mom's hip. And oftentimes my mom's hip was, was in the kitchen cooking something for the 10 kids. But uh, that, that's where I learned to cook. You know, that's, that's where I learned the love of cooking. And I, I got the love of cooking through my, through my mother. And, uh, you know, let me show you what I'm cooking. I'll show you. Let, let, let me, uh, I'm going to uh, pause the camera and I'll be right back. I'll show you what I'm cooking. All right. So this is what's on, this is what's on the menu today. You see, I've got uh, these two little machines cranking away. And I decided I was just flipping, flipping, flipping through my, uh, my crock pot. Crock-Pot recipe collection, and uh, and I, I, for whatever reason, this this is the recipe that caught my my eye, and I still don't know how to pronounce that. Moroccan chicken tagine, tagini, tagine, I don't know, but, uh, you know, look at the recipe. I'll let you just glance at the recipe, and I got to tell you, it smells good. It really, really smells good. It's that combination of the cumin, which I used to always pronounce cumin, but uh, cumin, the ginger, the cinnamon, the coriander, the the red pepper, and the, the cilantro, and and what have you. But uh, there it is, and it's been cooking now for the better part of about four hours, and that's hopefully what it's going to look like when it's all done. So I will uh, I'll show you the the inside here, and let's see what uh, what it looks like. Boy, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Look at that. All right, so I just need to do uh, just a few more steps, which is to take the chicken out, and then I got to put in some some baking uh, baking powder, I think, some baking powder and uh, and some almonds and what have you. So we'll be back just in a in a minute and uh, see how this turns out. All right, and dinner is served. And uh, does it look like the picture? I don't know. <laughs> Probably. Probably not. Sometimes you luck out and it looks just like the picture, and other times it doesn't. But uh, regardless, I'm sure this is going to be. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be good. Have a uh, have a great evening.